Hello everybody, Felix here. Today I wanted to start a series dedicated to Toontown tutorials, or how-tos if you will. And for my first episode, I wanted to do COG golf courses. This will help you go through a front three, middle six, or even a back nine. And without further ado, let's get right into it. Before you even enter a golf course, you should make sure to have your gag set up appropriately. This part is optional, but I'd also strongly recommend having at least 100 laugh. Before laugh requirements were changed to recommendations, this was the requirement to get into a front three. If you're doing a front three, bring three fogs and seven trunks at the very least, assuming that you're not soundless. Be sure to bring plenty of lure, throw, trap, and drop in that relative order of importance. Obviously, disregard whatever gag check you don't have if it's one of those. Tune-up is arguably the least important gag to bring to any golf course because you naturally regain so much laugh just from completing the puzzles. If you're doing a middle six or a back nine, be sure to also bring plenty of alugas, assuming that you're not soundless. I personally bring four, but you can probably get away with five or six. And again, be sure to bring plenty of lure, trap, throw, and drop. But also, on the other hand, if you're doing a back nine, it's recommended to bring less gags, and 40 and 50 are common numbers that people will recommend. The first puzzle that you'll encounter in the golf course is the Mole Stomp. For Mole Stomp, there will be a 6x6 grid of holes for a total of 36. Each person should claim a corner of their own so they can watch over their own 3x3 grid. I don't recommend favoriting any corner in particular, but some people do anyways and it works fine for them. Don't worry about others' corners unless they hit the wrong mole or they're struggling to stomp theirs and your corner is not busy. When the moles show up, only stomp on the red ones. The brown moles don't count towards your progress and they launch you into the air on a random hole. As you might have already guessed, you can run into another brown mole and another and thus set off a chain reaction. But don't worry if you hit one on accident, everyone makes mistakes and honestly I hit plenty of brown moles on accident. The amount of red moles your team needs to stomp depends on what type of golf course you're doing. The more holes, the more moles. After all the red moles have been stomped, the doors will open and you will proceed to the mazes. The first thing everyone needs to know about the mazes is that it's the same exact maze turned on four different sides. You're technically only memorizing two routes, but forwards and backwards. This knowledge is especially useful for back nine mazes to help you figure them out. In the front three, you'll only have to deal with one type of maze. It will be a single maze with 50 seconds to complete it. I'll show you all possible scenarios and how to tell which one it is. First, you can run into a four-way kind of hallway or intersection of sorts. You can tell it's the side of the maze because there will be two paths to the left and right respectively. Follow the path shown in the video to reach the other side. The reverse of this maze starts in a boxed off looking area and the only direction you'll be able to immediately go is right. Follow the reverse of the first scenario, which I will show on camera as well. The third scenario is a two-way. You can either go right or left. This is also technically the fourth scenario, but there is a key feature that makes sure you know which way to go. If you see branches directly in front of you when you enter the maze, go left. If there are no branches directly in front of the maze entrance, go right. You can also use the video of me running through the maze for reference. There's one more type of maze added to a middle six, and that's two back-to-back -back mazes with 60 seconds to complete. These mazes are exactly the same as the ones found in the front three, but you have less time to complete them. If you need full tutorials on completing these mazes and skip to this chapter, I'll have to refer you back to the front three section since it's the same scenarios. There's a lot of possible maze scenarios for a back nine. This is where having a basic understanding of the mazes and where you're going is a huge advantage since you're not going to be stuck memorizing each individual scenario that might happen. First, you need to remember that it's always the same maze turned onto one of four sides. Second, you need to remember that no matter what, either the first or second maze will go to the left instead of forwards. This means to think of how to get to the left side instead of the front on either the first or second maze. If the second maze was the one that turned left, that means the third maze will exit to your current right. If the first maze turned to the left, that means that the second maze will turn to your right. I'll play a compilation of some of the mazes you might see in a back nine, 
but keep in mind that it's not meant to be comprehensive. It's just meant to give you the gist of what I'm talking about so you can solve back nine mazes on your own, since rote memorization is not the best way to learn them. After getting to the maze, you will encounter your first cog fight. The first cog fight consists of only four level tanks. Unless you need to conserve your sound gags, just do one fog and three trunks. If you're not using sound, have someone use their hypno goggles while everyone else uses a cake on the cog directly in front of them. The last cog can be dealt with however your group decides. After you complete the first cog fight, you will proceed to the cog golf puzzle. The rules of this puzzle are simple. Match three light colors, or if you're colorblind, then unfortunately it will be three like shapes, until you get rid of the cog ball. Each time you complete a puzzle, you will win a gag as a prize, which will be anywhere between levels four and six. You can also get two power-ups in this puzzle. The first is the explosive ball, which will explode nearby balls of any color. This ball will quickly pulsate while it's in your slots. The second is the wild card ball which will act as every single color at once. It will slowly cycle through the rainbow while it's in your slots. You'll eventually notice that you keep encountering the same puzzles after doing enough golf courses. That's because there's a very small pool of puzzles the game can choose from. You'll never complete the same puzzle twice per hole though, because the game randomly chooses a set of puzzles from its pool that need to be completed. That means if the puzzles you're working on suddenly goes away despite you not winning or losing to it, it's because one of your fellow tunes completed it. I hope the background footage helped you get the gist, but it's a puzzle you'll learn best by experience. It's a puzzle that requires a little bit of decision making, so it's best to learn how to do it efficiently through trial and error. After you're done with the cog golf puzzle, you'll proceed to the second cog battle. The second cog fight will have four level 11 cogs, with one of them being a version 2.0. There's two common ways to deal with this fight. The most commonly used method is to lure and get rid of the 2.0 with TNT while the other two tunes will pass. Then, two tunes use their foghorns while the other two aluga. It doesn't matter in the front three, but in the middle six and back nine, it matters that you use your awugas and not your trunks. If you trunk instead of awuga, you'll probably run out of trunks and have trouble with the first cog fight. The next method is to just use lure for the entire fight. This one is more common sense and it's strategy based on what your team decides, so I won't detail it much. Also, before or as soon as this fight begins, people usually call out how many foghorns they have by just saying the number. So if people start calling out numbers, now you know why. You should also tell your teammates how many foghorns you have. And finally, the final cog battle. This battle will always take the place of the second cog fight on the last hole. 
there will be two regular level 11s, one level 11 version 2.0, and a level 12 version 2.0. There's a few ways your team might decide to defeat this battle. The first is that someone might fire the level 12 2.0, but don't count on someone else doing this. More likely, the level 12 2.0 will be taken out with two cakes or a TNT plus another gag. Obviously, however your team decides to get rid of the 2.0s is a decision made in the moment. After the 2.0s are taken care of, people will use sound if they have enough. If not, normal common sense strategy will be used to get rid of the remaining cogs. And now, you've completed the golf course. I hope this video was a helpful guide for anyone who needed help with COG golf courses or even just those who needed help with backhand mazes. That's all for this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!